Greetings! In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on sequential logic and provide you a review of input process output. You've already done this in the previous video series, but now we're going to spend some time, go through all of the steps, and show you a little bit more details so that you can solidify your understanding, practice a little bit more, and be ready for when we introduce new concepts. In this lesson, we're going to talk again about data types. Integers, floats, and strings should be familiar to you, but we're also going to introduce Booleans, which will be useful when we talk about conditional statements and loops. We'll also talk about how to use predefined functions for doing math, both using the ones that come with Python as well as those that are included in the math library. And finally, we're going to take you through one more example where we take a problem and break it down into a detailed logic design. We'll then show you how we can translate our logic designs into functional code and test along the way to make sure that we're doing every step correctly. As a reminder, what we're working with here is sequential logic, and our goal is to produce a set of consecutive instructions that get us from our starting position to our goal without any type of branching or deviation. So it's literally coming up with steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get from A to B. The most common pattern when we deal with sequential logic are what we call input process output problems, and those can be broken down into three steps. In the first step, we're getting values from the user. In the second step, we're doing something with those values. It typically involves some form of math. And in the third step, we're outputting the results to the user. Now let's take each of these steps and talk about them in detail. In step one, we're getting values from the user, and we do that using the input function. The input function, here's an example of it, and what you see is that when I call input, what it's doing is it's asking the user for a value, it gets it, and then it puts it in this variable here called numSteps. This should look familiar to you from the previous video, but this part here is probably new to you. What is going on here? Well, I can show you. If we go to Thony and I make a program that looks like this, you will see that if I press play, it looks like nothing's happening, but if I type a value and press enter, you'll see that it made the variable and it stored the value in it. So what I can also do is I can put a prompt in here. So give me a value, all right? And when, now when I press play, it will ask me for a value. I input it and it does the same thing. The important thing to see from here though, is if you look here, you'll see two little tick marks. And that means that the value that you're getting is a string. And that's really important because an input always returns a string. If we want to convert it to another data type, we can do so by using one of the following statements in this table. Basically, if you want to turn it to an integer, you would surround it with uh, parentheses and then put int. If you want to convert it to a float, this is a new data type for you. It's called Boolean. Boolean, all it means is true and false. Like I said, we won't talk about it too much this lesson, but we want you to be familiar with it. And we also wanted to show you that in Python, there's a distinction between characters and string. A character is one letter, a string can have many letters. So in this example, let's say I wanted to interpret this as an integer. What I would do is I would take int and then I would surround it all so that you can see int. So now it's gonna get the value from the user and then it's gonna convert it to an integer and then it's gonna store it in this variable. So when I press play and I type in a value, I see value equals one, two, three, four, five, and there's no ticks, so I know it's an integer. In step two, this is where we're actually doing some math, and you should already be familiar with Python's pre-built math operations. Uh, most of these make common sense, but there's some things that you can't do. For example, if I wanted to do a trigonometric op operation, like sine or cosine, I really don't have a way to do it using Python's pre-built math. Which is why Python also comes with a set of modules that can do more advanced things. So here there's a, a module called math that contains a bunch of math functions. So to use it, I type import math and then anytime I want to use it, I just say math dot and then I pick the item that I want. So let's say for example, I wanted to print out pi. If I was using my old Python skills, I would just say, I would make a variable and then I would make it equal to what I think pi is. I'm only a four digit pi nerd. Uh, so here, if I wanted to do it the correct way, I would import math, and then I would print out math.pi. And this one here is different because it's not just four digits, it's actually the real pi, right? There's a bunch of things that come included with, with math. Uh, here are just a, a small number of examples, sine, cosine, and tangent are all uh, included in math. It expects the value to be the value in radians. 
square root is uh, all I have to do here is say math.sqrt and here I can put like 64 and that will print out the square root of 64 which is 8. Ceiling and floor are also interesting uh, if you remember from I think this is elementary school. If you do ceiling of 5.1, that gets you 6. And if you do floor of 5.1, that should get you 5. The last step in IPO is outputting the results. And here's where we have to really pay attention to the details. Because oftentimes we'll get the right answer, but then we'll have trouble outputting it correctly to the screen. And it looks like it's failing all the tests when we really did 90% of the problem. So the first thing you have to think about is, are they asking you to put all the values on the same line? So this one, for example, is cadet so-and-so got a PFT score, an AFT score in their PEA. That could be one way to do it, which requires lots of commas in our print statement. Or oftentimes on like labs or assessments, what we'll do is we'll actually just ask you print three numbers on separate lines, one being the first value, one being the second value, and the last one being the third value. There's no set pattern for this. You just kind of have to pay attention to the problem and figure it out. Sometimes there's text proceeding, sometimes there isn't. Uh, on the programming exercises you're going to get to do, we, we will usually ask you to make uh, very user-friendly prompts. But other than that, for like labs and such, we, we're perfectly fine with this. So again, pay attention, you'll be fine. So now let's go through the process of actually taking a problem, building a logic design, and converting it into code, similar to what we did in the previous video series. So here I have a problem where I'm getting a value from the user, which represents the temperature in Fahrenheit, and then I'm outputting that temperature in Kelvin and Celsius, in that exact order. So this is a pretty classic IPO problem. So before we even start coding, we're going to write our logic design. So I'm going to use comments to represent my logic design because that will make it easy for me to know what I need to code. So the first thing I need to do is the input phase, which is I'm going to get the temperature from the user. The second phase is where I'm going to convert it, that temperature to Celsius and Kelvin. And if I remember correctly from chemistry, I believe it's easy to go from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Kelvin. So that's the order I'm going to do it in. So I'm going to say process, convert the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And then another process step will be convert the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. And then the last step will be to print it out. That's our output. Print out. And here, I think it's Kelvin first, then Celsius. So let's, now that we have our logic design written, we can actually write the code that will make all of this happen. So the first step is to get a temperature from the user. So I'm going to say degrees Fahrenheit, and that's going to be equal to imp, an input. So now I'm going to test my program. I'm going to say, uh, let's say 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and it looks like it's, oh wait, it's not correct, because look at the, the ticks here. That means it's a string, and I don't want it to be a string, right? Because 32 is supposed to be a floating point number. So what I will go ahead and do is convert it to float. And the reason it's float is because you could have 32.7 degrees, 98.6 degrees, that sort of thing. All right, so now we've gotten our temperature from the user, and we stored it in a variable. Now we need to convert that temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I'll make a new variable called uh, degrees Celsius. And then I will set it equal to degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths. And I have to remember to use my parentheses, right? So you take degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times it by 5 ninths. Uh, just to be clear, I totally did not know this. Uh, I have it written on a card in front of me because I didn't remember it from high school. And now I can create a new variable, degrees Kelvin. And it's going to be equal to degrees Celsius uh, plus 273.15. So if I was to test it now, I should be able to press play, type 32. And yes, 32 degrees, which is the freezing point of water, is 0 degrees Celsius. I, I remember that from chemistry. And it's 273.15 degrees Kelvin. So that all looks good. So now all we have to do is print it out. So I'm going to print out Kelvin first and then print out Celsius, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and press play and type 32 and, oh, okay, okay. So this was not planned, but this is a great learning exercise. Um, down here, 
uh, you can actually read the error. So I know you're all scared of red things, but don't be. Uh, this actually explains a lot. So here it says that the name Kelvin is not defined. And if I look up here, it says the error occurred on line 11. So when I go up here, I realize, oh, it's not Kelvin, it's degrees Kelvin. And it's not Celsius, it's degrees Celsius, right? So now when I press play, I'm just gonna replace the variable now it outputs the correct values. So that was a great way for us to, uh, you know, to, to show you how debugging is really important and how reading the errors can really tell you what's going on there. So if we go back to our example, you can actually see the logic design that we developed, and you'll see that the one in the slide deck is very close to what we came up with. You know you're doing the right amount of detail in your logic design when each sentence in your logic design basically equates to a, a few lines of code in Python. Any more than that, then you're really, um, you're probably not thinking at the right level of detail. Um, notice how the logic design here is very detailed. You know, we want to make sure that it's almost one for one. Oh, and of course, there's a slide on debugging. So yeah, don't ignore the error messages. They'll give you a lot of useful clues. Uh, the easiest way to interpret it is read the last line first. And it says, okay. So in this case, degrees Fahrenheit, it looks like I misspelled Fahrenheit is not defined and then you can go and say oh that's where it occurred right so that's where you start looking that's what the message is this is this is one that I think is really common and um, you guys encounter it so much we're gonna actually go over this right now so here it says unsupported operand type string and integer so this happens when you forget to convert the the input from a, a string, which is what you would get from the user, into a number. So when you do that, let's say I do this, see how I get the, the error message here? What's happening is, is that this has a string in it, so the string 32 minus the number 32, Python doesn't know what to do, it doesn't know how to subtract a number from a string, so it just kind of blows up on you. So to fix that, all we have to do is tell Python that it's a number, and then now I can do a number minus another number, Python's all, all cool with that. So if I do another, right, you should get something like that. So yes, again, you tried to do uh, math on a string, you forgot to convert it. Hopefully this has been uh, a good review and a good way for us to go over IPO one more time and give you time to really think about all the steps involved. So get started, work hard, uh, and let us know how we can help. Uh, we believe in you. Take care.